Welcome to section two, creating reusable UI elements. In this section, we are going to be looking at creating a variety of UI elements that can be used across a game, including a modal dialog window, a simple character dialog window, an inventory screen with drag and drop functionality, and a shop window. Our first video will be our first look at dialogues, creating a modal dialog window. We'll be making a button prompt that will show when a player gets close enough to a teleporter object, and we'll be passing events to the dialogue we build that will allow us to set functions to call when the confirm button is pressed. Let's open up Unity. Open up the section two start scene. And if we press play, we can see we have our player, a red cube, who is our shopkeeper, and a gray cube over here that will be a teleporter, which will prompt the player to press a button when they step into its collider, and then bring up a modal dialogue for them to decide whether to teleport or not. The first thing we want to create is a screen space canvas that will contain our modal dialogue add an image to it, and set it to anchor centered, with a width and height of 400. Add the dialog box sprite to it. This is a sliced sprite that we'll be reusing throughout our UI. We'll rename the image background and the canvas modal dialog. A modal dialog is when a box pops up with a message and prompts the player to press yes or no. So in this example, we might ask the player, do you want to teleport? And they can answer teleport or stay here. For now, let's focus on the design. We want a couple of buttons and a text element. I'll style these very quickly. We have a button background sprite, which we can use for buttons, and position them so that we have space for two buttons either side. Then set the text sizes and name them. We're also going to give the confirm button an accent color so that it stands out as the default action to take when shown to the player. I'm going to add another image behind the modal dialog, which will be a transparent black overlay. This will make the modal window stand out more when we're displaying it. We're going to make this dialog box reusable. There's only one of them ever displayed on the screen, so it makes sense that we wouldn't need more than one game object in our scene at any time. It also cuts out a lot of work if we had to create a new one of these for each time we wanted to get the player's input. So now let's make a script to set the values on the modal. Call it modal dialog and open it up in Visual Studio. Create a reference at the top for each of our elements that will be changing in the modal. So the text, both of the buttons, and the text on each button. The parameters we'll need to set on the modal will be a piece of text asking a question, the text for each of the buttons, so a confirm text and a cancel text, and the Unity event to trigger when the user presses the Confirm button. We'll create a function called setDialog, which will set these, and we can ignore the Cancel button for the minute, since we don't need to set the value of its onClick through code. To make our lives easier, we're going to pass an object to the setDialog function called a dialog object, and we'll create that down underneath our class definition. This will contain all of the parameters we want to set on the modal dialog, three strings and a Unity event. We'll need to add a using statement for using unity engine.events. In our function now, we can set the three text components, text fields, to the text on our dialog object. We'll also need to remove any listeners that are on our buttons on click event and add the unity event that we're passing from the dialog object. This all means that we can add a dialog object on our teleporter that has all of these values, set them using this function, and show the modal window then call the functions to run when the button is clicked. Back in Unity, we want to set up our cancel button to hide the modal window and the overlay when it's clicked. Next, we need to trigger the modal when the user presses a button inside the teleporter, 
if we look at the teleporter game object, you can see that it's a cube with a trigger collider on it. So we want to show a button prompt when the player steps in here, and when they press that button, show the modal dialog. We're going to create a script called dialog trigger. And while that's loading, just set the references on our modal dialog script. In Visual Studio, we'll delete the start and update functions for now and add a public dialog object called dialog. We want to go back to our modal dialog script and create a class instance variable so that we can access it from other classes easily. In the start function, set it. Then back in dialog trigger, we can access this with modal dialog.instance. We're going to create an on trigger enter function to get the player when they walk into our box. We can do this by checking if the other game object has the same tag as our player. We can copy this and change it to the trigger exit, so we'll be hiding our button prompt as well. The button prompt is just going to be a canvas that will set to active when the player is in range, and inactive when they're not. We're also going to have an update function, which will check if the player is in range using a can interact boolean, which will set in the triggers. And if they are, and they press the E button, we will call the function to show our modal on the modal dialog window. Make sure that it's active first, and also set can interact and our button prompt to false. So we need to set our dialog options for the teleporter and create a button prompt. This will just be a scaled down world space canvas that has a border image, a background image, and the text E in white. Set it as a child with a teleporter and bring it up a bit higher so that we can see it. When we're done, we'll also make a prefab of it to use with a shopkeeper later and hide it. Then on our dialog trigger script, we can set the reference to this and set up our dialog object question confirm, cancel text, and the unity event, which we'll just set it to false. We'll go into the script and make it set itself inactive once the reference has been created. So there we have it, a reusable custom dialogue window that can be applied in a variety of places in the game. You might use this in the main menu to check if the player really wants to quit, or when the player is navigating between maps. In this video, we built up our modal dialog window and made it reusable by setting the values from an external script triggers it. We also made a world space button prompt indicator that gets used to trigger the dialog.